Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I'm going to be using some goodies from the Not Too Shabby online store to create a fun coffee themed card with a special surprise inside. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Even though the wonderful May kits are sold out on the Not Too Shabby online store, there are still some individual pieces left. And two of those pieces are the stamp sets over here on the left. The I Heart Coffee and Drink the Coffee. So I thought today I would share a quick and easy card using these two stamp sets. And like I mentioned before, there is a little surprise inside. I will be doing an easy little bit messy background technique with some plastic wrap and colored ink pads and for my ink pads what I did was I took the colors from the coffee and friends 6x6 paper pad and I tried to grab some inks that I had would match those so I have kind of a craft or a light brown a dark brown and then a light and dark turquoise I will also be doing a little bit of heat embossing, so I got out my Versamark ink and my Detail White embossing powder. And down here at the bottom of my supplies, I have this kind of long, skinny, rounded rectangle die. And this is what is going to be part of the surprise inside. If you think you know what this die is for, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. But don't ruin it quite yet in the comment section below. Going along with my color theme, I went ahead and pre-cut and folded my cardstock and card bases. I will be using a craft card base that is top fold. And then for the inside, I cut a piece that was four by five and a quarter. Just, I needed a little bit for my surprise and a little bit so your inner message is easier to read on that craft cardstock. For the front, I cut a piece of teal cardstock that is three and a half by four and three quarters, and then a piece of white that is three and a quarter by four and a half. So these just have a small eighth of an inch border all the way around. If I add any other products or tools as I go along, I will make sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. And speaking of products, I will have the two stamp sets from Not Too Shabby linked in the description box below, along with a 10% off coupon code so you can save a little too. These will probably go quick, so if you want them, you might want to snatch them up now. Let's get crafty! Hold the presses. Before I get to that process video, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say a great big thank you and welcome to my latest paper trimmer level member, Mary Falconer. I would also like to thank all of my channel members. And if you're interested in finding out about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. To get started today, I'm going to be doing the background inking technique. So I brought in my inks, the plastic wrap, and because this is a little messy, I brought in a clear cutting board. Getting started is super simple. You take your piece of plastic wrap and just kind of crinkle and ball it up. Now I need to make sure that my inked area is larger than the stamp, so I pulled that in quickly to see what area I would need to cover. I'm going to start inking with the light brown and all you do is tap that saran wrap right onto the ink pad and then bring it over to your piece of cardstock and usually one tap turns out darker and then I just keep tapping until the saran wrap runs out of ink and then I go refill it. Now at this point you have a couple different options. You could just go straight to the dark brown since the ink won't really transfer from the light. Or you can open it back up here like I did and re-wrinkle it, finding just a new section of clean saran wrap. You then just continue this same process until you have used 
all of the inks that you want to and then bring back in that stamp and make sure that the area you want is covered. While I finish up with all of those colors, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question has to do with what I'm doing on screen now, and I would like to know, have you ever tried this technique? And if so, what do you call it? I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below, and if you do take the time to answer, I would love for you to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your comment so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I'm honestly not sure what it is called. I know that when I was participating in craft roulette, this is probably what Mary Gunn would call crinkle inkle, but after I was doing a little bit more research on hashtags today, I also saw something with ink smooshing or cling wrap technique, so I'd love to know what you call it. The next step for today's card is going to be stamping and heat embossing on that piece that I just inked. Now the inks I used should dry quickly, but I did bring in my heat tool and heat set that just in case. But if you don't have a heat tool like I do, you could always just use a piece of paper towel, press down on there and see if it pulls up any ink. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment and heat emboss it on the piece that we just inked. This is almost going to give it kind of like an emboss resist effect once we're all done. I did go ahead and bring in my stamp positioner for this just so I could make sure that everything was straight across when I stamped it and because on the embossing part I want to ink it up and stamp it twice just to make sure that it is nice and juicy. You'll see that I did use my embossing buddy too even though I did dry the ink. This was just an extra step. Once I have stamped it, the powder gets poured on and then I bring back in that heat tool and I heat set that powder. Since that positioner is still out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on the inside. I will be using that teal ink again along with the sentiment that says, You Mocha Me Happy. Now because I need to do the die cutting on the inside, I did bring in the die from before and I placed those two together on the inside of the card before inking up my sentiment and stamping it. After that was stamped, I brought that die back in and a little piece of scotch removable tape. I placed my die where I thought it looked nice centered left to right and straight across above the sentiment. And then I went and die cut that. Do you have any idea yet what this might be for? I'm not quite going to reveal it yet, but all of the pieces are done so it's time to assemble the card. Because of what goes in the little die cut slit on the inside, I do want to keep this card as flat as possible. So all the layers on the front just get ATG on the back, no foam tape or dimensionals. Did you guess that that was a slot for a gift card? If you did, congratulations! I thought this card would make a great one for a coffee loving friend who maybe needs a little pick me up. So I thought I would hide that gift card inside so there's a little surprise waiting. I did want to make sure that the gift card would fit when I adhered it to the card, so I did use that same piece of removable tape to hold the gift card in place while I put the adhesive on the back. This way, when I go to put it on the card, I haven't adhered it down too tight where I won't be able to slip that card in easily later. I did decide before I would call this card finished to embellish the front with some light blue and light brown enamel dots. Originally I was going to put two of the light blue and one of the brown, but I thought that looked a little uneven. So I decided to bring in another brown enamel dot, which means I needed one more to make sure that I had an odd number of embellishments. And here's a look at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, we appreciate a thumbs up. Until our next video, we hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.